everyone, my name is Jenny and today we are going to talk about a super hot topic and it's always going to be a hot topic and that is separation anxiety. We definitely went through it and I would say we're about 85% there or maybe 80%, I don't know. Um, sometimes some dogs can really be perfect by themselves and some dogs will just never get there. Um, it's really along this long spectrum of extreme separation and anxiety versus um, being perfectly happy being alone. And all dogs are different, so if you're interested and you need to do some separation anxiety training with your dog, then please keep watching. <laughs> So this might be boring to you if you already know a lot about separation anxiety, but I just want to do a little intro about what is it. So basically dogs are very, very um, used to always being around other dogs. It's just part of their ancestry, part of their nature, that they are pack animals. And you know, I have a greyhound, her name is Daphne, she's a beautiful blue brindle, very tired as always, she's always sleeping in all of my videos. But anyway, um, she is definitely uh, very used to the pack animal lifestyle, especially for her breed because they're racing dogs and they are always together. As soon as she's born, she has a bunch of siblings and they all train together. They're at a race course together and that's how she grew up. So really the first time ever that she's ever been alone is with me. So how did we get from chewing up the door frame, whining, barking, pacing continuously uh, to now she is able to lie down. She whines cyclically. So she'll whine a tiny bit and the whining just got smaller and smaller and smaller. So now what she'll do is she'll whine a little like, so if she's whining a little bit, she'll stop. Then she'll start whining again. But the gaps in between the whining has grown. What did we do? <sighs> Number one, the fundamentals, the fundamentals, I'm telling you, you cannot skip these steps at all. You just are not going to be able to get anywhere if your dog is showing any signs of separation anxiety if you do not practice you leaving the house. So literally, you have to practice from 10 seconds of leaving and you have to slowly build it up from 10 seconds to 30 seconds to two minutes. I literally followed this thing which I mentioned in one of my videos, Adopting a Greyhound before. It was called Canine of Mine. That was a website and they have a template. It's like a diary and it just tells you how to build it up in different phases. So I did this with her for months. I would say three, four, five months we did this and I would log like a crazy dog mom because I guess that's why what I am and why I have this channel. I would log how she reacted every single day. So, you know, it wasn't that detailed, but it was definitely just helping me track how she was going, whether she was actually progressing to be better or maybe we needed to cut back more. So, you know, you slowly build up from 30 seconds, couple of minutes, then 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but you don't keep going up and up and up. You go up, it's like three steps forward, one step back. So it's just kind of building up there perseverance, building up their patience and their ability to be alone. So you have to practice that. There is no shortcut around it, unfortunately. I, I mean, you need to help them gradually. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work out if your dog is showing signs of separation anxiety. The second fundamental thing is you have to exercise them. If they're bored and they just have so much pent up energy, then they're gonna be more destructive. They have too much energy, they don't know how to channel it and you're gone. So the anxiety, the stress, the energy, like that is not a good storm that you wanna have. So those are just the step zero fundamentals. You just have to practice, literally open the door, jingle the keys, try and get them used to that sound and not panicking every time that happens. And then the next steps are, these are really after you've done the prerequisites or the fundamentals. I think that you need to figure out where your dog's safe space is. This may be the crate. A lot of people talk about crate training and I think that is absolutely important. I had Daphne in the crate in the first few months that I had her. She actually really hated the crate. 
and sometimes you can train a dog out of it but sometimes some dogs just don't like things if they don't like carrot you can't train them to like a carrot there are just some things about them and you know some things are trainable some things are not actually what i did was she tried to dig herself out of the crate she was very unhappy she would react worse inside the crate than outside so what i did was i figured out her safe space was my room every dog is different i'm not saying that's going to work for your dog my point is find your dog's safe space so you got to find that and just train them to keep going to that spot so i would teach her go to bed and now she knows where that is she loves going to her bed and before i leave i will tell her go to bed so she has a position that she goes to and you know the discipline really helps and then the second thing is distractions lots and lots of different types of distractions will help especially in the beginning so lots of people talk about kongs a kong you know lots of people have it you fill it up you put peanut butter in it you put treats in it then you freeze it but when your dog is suffering from a lot of separation anxiety, often what will happen is they won't even eat when you've left the room. She was so stressed about me having left the room, the house, that she did not go after the treat. So for us, what worked better was treats that were like literally right there in your face. So long lasting treats that are really good that lasted for us is the Himalayan uh, yak chews it's like a cheese um, that is safe and very digestible for dogs it's super super hard and it's going to take them a long time to consume it and in fact when you get back home after an hour it might still be there and all you do is you wash it then you put it back in your fridge um, in a container so we use that those are a little bit expensive and then i moved on to pig ears and now cow ears those are really big. I cannot show you right now because otherwise she's gonna come out and she's gonna consume all of it and she doesn't need any more treats today. But that thing is the size of my face, I promise. It is so big and I kind of try and mix it up because I did hear that the level of fat in the pig ears are quite a lot. So if you're leaving the house every single day, uh, maybe a good tip is to mix it up. Second distraction is there are free like eight hour calming dog calming sounds on YouTube and those ones are good. It didn't work for my dog, but for some dogs, it's worth trying out. This is all trial and error. You need to find out what is going to work for your dog. Is it going to be a puzzle? Is it going to be a toy? Is it going to be some specific treat? Is it going to be the calming music? I also heard that reggae music calms dogs down. Another type of distraction, some that I've heard good things about is the pheromone collar or there is a pheromone plug-in and basically that um, gives dogs this chemical reaction where they feel calm. It literally is meant to calm them down. I have not tried that but I have researched and read about it um, we've come to a point where obviously I don't need that kind of stuff for her to be alone But that is another tip So something that we tried for her travel anxiety and I also experimented on the separation anxiety is CBD oil I opted for CBD oil because I didn't want to go for prescription drugs and prescription drugs can be expensive And I just don't want to have the inconvenience of continuing to ask my vet approve these things for her so I found a brand called Petals and Tails and they have very high quality, full spectrum CBD oil that is third party verified, FDA verified, and this does not make your dog high. I explained this in the travel anxiety video that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. CBD oil, um, it is all from the same one hemp plant, many different species of hemp and it only depends on how this hemp is grown, the temperature, the conditions, and which part of the plant you're picking from on whether that results in your dog being high. Uh, but every CBD oil product out there across the 50 states of the US, it's legal when it's below 0.3% THC. So the CBD oil products that Petals and Tails has 
Look how cute this bottle is. Honestly, I love their design aesthetic. Um, is totally less than 0.3% THC, will not make your dog high. So this dosage is the 500 mg. They have 250 mg and 1000 mg. For dogs my, uh, her size, so she's 63 pounds, she will need the 500 mg or the 1000 mg. You can get 15% off with my code Daphne15. And if you're not happy with the droppers, like you're scared of opening your dog's mouth and dropping it in, have an amazing peanut butter version. Um, which is the same dosage. It's hard to see, but that is also 500 mg. So I'll put the link below in the description, but that is one method where you can get some help in helping your dog to get through separation anxiety. I would probably focus on using this kind of assistance in the beginning few weeks or months. And then as your dog gets better and better, you can take it out. You don't need that kind of assistance to help with the separation anxiety. So that is one thing. The other thing that helped me so much, and actually this is not even for severe separation anxiety, this might even help with the security of your home or just when you're curious to see what your dog is up to, I have a Furbo camera. And I was one of those dog parents that when I, before I got her, I was like, I'm never gonna get a camera for my dog. That's like so much micromanagement, that's just, being a helicopter mom and blah, blah, blah. But here I am <laughs> with a camera and it is actually super, super helpful. It just gave me um, a sense of peace whenever I was out for three, four or five hours. And what I love about it is that it dispenses treats. So it connects to an app, the Furbo camera app, and you can press a button and I'm gonna show you here and it dispenses treats. So it kind of distracts them again. It's all about that distraction. But the crazy thing that I thought I would never use on the camera that worked for me, that really got us over the separation anxiety line, if, if you will, was that they have a microphone on that app. So basically you can talk to your dog uh, through that app. This is the Ferber camera that we have. It's actually on right now. The treats will dispense through this hole. Um, the treats are in there. And oh my God, like it has a speaker. This is not sponsored by the way. Ferber is not paying me. It was about $120, $130 or something. Totally worth it. I am just amazed. And this is like, Step three, if your dog is extremely destructive, if your dog is super, super crazy, crazy separation anxiety, that is when you really do need a professional trainer to come into the picture. And a lot of people have mentioned this to me. They say, you know, the best solution is just getting another dog. And you know what? I don't know if that is per se a solution. You really need to decide that you want another dog despite the separation anxiety issue. You know, you have to be able to afford it. You have to be able to afford it not only financially, but emotionally, mentally, you know, all of that stuff. It might take months, it might take years, but patience is key and you can do this. It is Thanksgiving right now when I'm recording this video. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Please stay safe, everybody, and God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.